this whole idea of freedom of speech and this conversation is very important to me and I'm glad to have you on to talk about it. So what well, started out as a neo, of course, a neo-Nazi murder in Charlottesville and the president's failure to denounce Nazi and white supremacists exploded into a discussion in this country about the removal of Confederate statues. Have we gotten away from the point of what happened in Charlottesville, what it was really about? And it seems to me we clearly have, and I think that was the point of the alt-right and the white supremacists seizing on an issue that they know that there's actually broad public consensus on not moving a lot of these statues. There's a Quinnipiac poll that came out today showing that 50 to 39 Americans aren't big on the idea of moving all these statues out. So they seized on an issue that they think is a winning issue for them and then tried to broaden out their appeal that way. And I think a lot of folks on the left fell for it. They want to have this discussion anyway, and so they saw the opportunity to have this discussion. But it seems like a misdirection from what actually happened in Charlottesville. The issue in Charlottesville is white supremacy, not whether some people think that statues should come down or stay up, because clearly 50% of the American population doesn't want to keep these statues up just because they're a bunch of white supremacist racists. Did uh, liberals get played by President Trump? I think pretty clearly they, they definitely fell for what was, whether he plans it or not, a trap for the left. I mean, he said... You guys don't have a limiting principle. You're going to go after statues of George Washington or Christopher Columbus or Thomas Jefferson. And now you're seeing that actually happen on the left. The, the most obvious stupid case is this banning of this, this reporter from ESPN named Robert Lee, an Asian guy, <laughs> from covering an event at University of Virginia. You know, the, the political correctness of the left is actually driving people into Trump's arms, even though Trump's initial response to Charlottesville and then his Tuesday response to Charlottesville was entirely wrong. I think that one thing that Trump has had, he's just benefited from the fact that the left is constantly reacting to everything he says with a, an enormous level of passion. And I think that that's actually a negative. Uh, even what he did last night insofar as going after the media, because the media reacted instead of doing objective analysis of where he was not telling the truth, they jumped to you know extraordinary critiques of his mental health and, and talking about how he was crazy and how he was morally bereft and all this stuff. All that does is it plays to his crowd. His crowd thinks that the media is out to get him. His crowd thinks that the media have a particular emotional animus for him personally. And so anything that the, the media do uh, is, going to, is going to exacerbate that. Well, two things. And, and by the way, just because ESPN, I want to get it correct. ESPN has responded and they're saying they didn't ban um, the guy's name is Robert. Yeah, they moved Lee. him off of it. They yeah. didn't ban him. They asked him if he wanted to and he picked uh, something that was closer to his family. Uh, they said that they didn't ban him and it was they were looking out for his own interest. They're trying to take away our culture. They're trying to take away our history. And our weak leaders, they do it overnight. The media is simply responding to people who are there protesting and to the story of the statues being taken down. The media hasn't called for the statues to be taken down. Um, so I don't understand when he says the media is trying to take away your culture. What is... Well, I mean, I, I do think that one of the conservative critiques of the media, and this has been true for as long as I've been alive and probably <laughs> before that, is that the media have an agenda, a political agenda, and they hide behind this patina of objectivity in order to press forward this political agenda. You know, Don, you were very passionate about President Trump's statements about the media last night, and I think some of that was justified, but I think a lot of it actually goes to what his base thinks, which is they think that you have an animus particularly for President Trump, that you have an animus for his agenda on things like Confederate statues. I think you personally probably want to see these Confederate statues come down. I mean, would you, don't you, is that true? I mean, I, I would assume you do. Listen, I lived in the South for a long time, and to tell you the truth, I, I knew the statues are there. I was offended by the statues. Whether they should come down, I would leave it up to the individuals. But I do think that they are insulting to people, just as you would, would you want to see a statue of Hitler as, as a No, Jewish I totally person, understand right? your point of view. The would point you want is to go that you have to, a point Which view, I made right? earlier, would you want to go to, and listen, we shouldn't pretend that there's this fake objectivity. Everyone has a point of view. It doesn't mean that you're biased. And so, but just well, to get people to understand, as a Jewish person, you would not want to go to a Hitler high school. Well, that of same effect, African Americans, that has the same effect. Robert E. Lee has the same effect on African Americans. And so, and also the Confederate flag. And so I think we have to be understanding of each other. It's not that I don't like the president or I have an agenda against the president. I'm simply speaking the truth as I see it. Okay, so, and, and I totally understand that, but his, what he's saying and what his people are hearing is mm -hmm. he's saying essentially that you do have an agenda in terms of what you think, promulgating what you think about Confederate statues. You have a clear point of view on that. That's a perfectly acceptable and I think understandable point of view, but the implication is that you are 
an objective reporter who's actually propagating a point of view, whatever that point of view may be. I mean, you just said openly that you don't think that your point of view is biased, but your point of view clearly is biased. But I mean, what you, I, what you I said like about the, the president last would, night coming out of his speech had nothing to do with statues. I was talking about his behavior on stage. So that, I, and, that had nothing to total, do with that. Yeah. Again, totally understood. But the way that it read is that you have a personal animus toward the president, and that's the way he wants to play it. No. So whether that's true or not, that's the way that a lot of his followers are going to take it. I only have a personal animus towards ignorance when people don't know their history, whether that's the president of the United States, a guest on this show, or someone I speak to on the street. I think if you're going to be able to, you need to be able to defend yourself. And, and in order to defend yourself, in order to have a, a right, clear perspective, you need to know history and you need to be educated about it. And in many ways, I think people who are fighting for these issues are not. Um, and that means the people who want to take the statues down and some of them who do, who do not want to take the statues down as well.